إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله من خلقه وصفيه وبعد فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنه وأن يجعل ما نقوله ونسمعه حجة لنا لا علينا يوم الدين ثم ما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته With the will of Allah Jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala we are still on a journey looking desperately to be loved by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala we are still on a journey where we are just giving up us our everything, everything we've got to return to Allah Jalla wa ala and to find Him pleased with us. We are doing everything which is possible to wake up every day and to turn, coming closer to Allah Jalla wa ala into our goal. Sometimes we fall and then we stand. But as I said in a previous khutbah, failing is not about falling. Failing is about falling and not getting up after the fall. And this is the way we go forward. Sometimes they are, days are against us. Sometimes days are in our favor. Sometimes our eyes listen to our minds and sometimes they don't. Sometimes our tongues are submitted to what we really want and sometimes they are not. But as long as we are alive, we will keep on fighting, figuratively speaking, to get safely to the other side. Because that is eventually what we are doing. We're just travelers like the Prophet Muhammad has said. We are traveling until we finally end up in one destination, being Jannah or not. That travel has started before your body was created because we were souls before being bodies. And that journey will never ever stop. The you is not the package you see. The package you see will soon disappear and melt away. It will be eaten by worms far and deep beneath the soil, but that's, that soul will remain. So this is why we are talking about taqwa, because we said, if we want to be beloved by Allah Jalla wa ala, then we are in need of taqwa. And we said, said taqwa means that you stay away of everything which Allah hates, being it words, being it thoughts, being it emotions, being it whatever it is that Allah doesn't like, financially, socially, spiritually, and so forth. And it also means that you do everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obliged you to do. That is taqwa. So taqwa, the more taqwa you have, the more you will be beloved by Allah. It is like your child. The more it listens to you, the more it follows your guidance, the basic love is the same, but the more you will appreciate it. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah yuhibbul muttaqin. Allah loves people with taqwa. If you know that Allah loves taqwa and people with taqwa, that should be on your priority list. If you know that Allah will love you if you have taqwa, then the first thing you will be looking for is taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes when you feel alone, well, if you have taqwa, Allah is with you. Because Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah ma'alladheena taqaw. Allah is with people who have taqwa. The more taqwa we have, the more Allah will be with us. Allah, if your life is difficult, have taqwa. Allah says in the Quran, and if you have taqwa, Allah will facilitate all your affairs, being dunya, deen, akhira, socially, economically. That's the promise of Allah Jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have taqwa, Allah will increase your ajr. Instead of giving, for example, 25 or 27 rewards for one prayer, He will increase it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْظِمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا Allah will increase the ajr of people with taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about taqwa and he said, yani If you have taqwa, be with people who are genuine. Who are people who are genuine? People that admit their mistakes and people that show you yours. This is the problem today. People don't admit theirs and they don't tell you what your mistakes are until you separate. It's only when you separate that people show you their true selves. It is there all of a sudden where they have a list. I never liked you. I always thought you were cruel. I always thought you were, uh, you, you were not patient, not generous, not this. Not, you said, I've asked you a thousand times. 
to tell me what is wrong with me. And you all never said anything until we separate. No, be ma'a sadiqeen. Ittaqullaha, ittaqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Because the people who are genuine, they will help you in creating taqwa which you are so in need of. But today, we are looking at Allah Jalla wa'ala connecting taqwa to the end of your life. The end of your life is not when you imagine it. Forget that. The end of your life, we are planning, like the Prophet said, plan like you were to be living forever, but prepare for death like you would die today. Plan like you would live forever. That means at an intellectual level, plan. At an emotional level, be prepared to look into the eyes of the angel of death right now. Right now, maybe one day I will be delivering khutbah, I die right in front of you. You will be sitting here, maybe you die right in front of me. But it is just because shaitan's strongest weapon is to create illusions because he is the master of deceit. He made us believe that we have another day, another month, another year, and that we will keep on living. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ittaqullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that everybody fears Allah and that every soul looks at what it has prepared for tomorrow. What is that tomorrow? The day that you will not be expecting. It's the day where you think, where you tell your grandchildren, granddad is coming tomorrow, let's go to the park. Or when you tell your children, next week I will have time for you, when I'm not as busy. It is when you least expect it, boom, it comes, done. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ittaqullah, and he says, well, tandur nafsu ma qaddamat li ghad. Why is it called ghad? Because one day death will be your tomorrow. Tomorrow, one day will be your death. You know what the strange thing is? When you die, you'll have a couple of people crying, but the bus driver is driving his bus, he doesn't know about you. The train driver saying, the pilot flying, nothing in the world will stop because of you dying. The only thing that will stop is you being able to make hasanat. That will be the only thing that will stop for you in your life. It is like literally no longer being able to eternalize your life. But there is a danger. When we keep on delaying good actions, we keep on delaying repentance. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah says, fear Allah as he is supposed to be feared. What does that mean? That means according to your ability. That doesn't mean like, well, this is my ability. No, you're exhausted of trying to fear Allah, meaning protecting yourself against his anger as much as you can. There is not a word you say or you ask yourself, if my Lord were to ask me, Yawm al-Qiyamah, iqra kitabak, read your book, that I will say, I know what I've said in my life because I never spoke without thinking. I never broke a heart. I never didn't keep up a promise. I never insulted. I never gossiped. I never backbited. You know that when you come to Allah that you had taqwa with your tongue. And then when you're asked about your eyes, you say, I was blind for haram and I was looking at nothing but halal. Who can see, say this today? Have we been repented from every haram? Have we repented from everything we looked at? Everything we listened to? Everything we walked to? The electricity maybe that we used in a bad way? The protection that Allah gave in a safe house? that we may be, we're using to look at haram, speak haram, whatever it may be. Are we prepared to die now? This is an honest question, it's not a story. Death is the only certainty you have regarding your life. Nothing else. I keep on repeating this. I kept on repeating this. The wife you have, tomorrow maybe you're divorced. The children you have, maybe today they turn against you, they don't know you or they stab you in the back. The job you have, you can lose it. The honor you have, you can lose it. The mind you have, maybe you get a disease, you don't remember anything. Everything you have can be taken away from you. Apart from one thing, the hasanat you die upon. What does that mean by the way? Do not die except as Muslims. What does that mean? It means hold on to your Islam at every moment because every moment can be your death. Imagine yourself, imagine myself dying when we are doing haram. Is that how we want to go back to Allah? Now the problem is, the more used you get to a haram, the more present it will be in your life. And the more likely it will be that you die while performing haram. 
But if you are a light prayer, performer, during the night, even 10 minutes, every day of your life, 10 minutes, where you beg on your knees, Ya Rabbi, please. You say, Ya Rabbi, please forgive me for my sins. Ya Rabbi, protect me. I don't want to die in a bad way. Ya Rabbi, protect me against myself. Protect me against the people. Ya Rabbi, take me in your protection. Do you really think that Allah will let you down? But very often we're not even asking for that. So, Meaning you are not sure of dying as a Muslim. Forget that. You are so convinced I will die like a Muslim. In whose hands is faith Allah's? And He Jalla wa'ala can take it away exactly as He has given it to you. You have no guarantee, I have no guarantee that I will die like a Muslim. So what are we going to do? Taqwa. Because taqwa removes you from the anger of Allah. Thus, from the possibility of dying without faith. And this is why we prepare ourselves with taqwa. Why? Because then the moment you die, you're at rest. The moment you're on your deathbed, you think, my sins, I've repented from all of them. The hearts I've broken, I've healed them. The promises I made that I didn't keep, I apologized for it. Everything on your deathbed will be clear. The problem is, sorry, arrogance is that what prevents us from rectifying things in the dunya and they will be, they will be rectified by Allah on the Day of Judgment. So that is why taqullah haqqa tuqatihi is here. Because there we have nothing. It will be rectified, hasana sayyia, and nobody will have mercy for you. Nobody. So have the courage to rectify the wrongs. Have the courage to rectify and repent. And then when you die, you don't have to think of anything. I wronged my child, or I wronged my wife or my husband. I wronged my neighbors, my friend, my sister, my brother, whatever it may be, myself, because you need to repent for your own sins. And you have to, to be able, every day before you go to bed, you have to be able to tell yourself, if I die now, I don't know what I have to rectify. That's going to bed like a Muslim. It's not like things pending, they're pending. You know, if, if payments are pending, they're always on your mind, right? Oh, I still have to pay this, I still have to pay that. And the more you delay it, the more stress yani, it will cause in your mind. Now, when you go to bed, you want to be stressless. When you die now, there is nothing you regret. Because every time you go to bed, you go to something which looks very much like the grave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that he is anfus. He is the one that takes away the souls. Those who sleep, whom he decides not to return the soul to. And that's why the Prophet used to say in his dua before going to bed to bed, he would ask, In amsakta nafsi farhamha. Subhanallah. Ya Rabbi, you are about to, that's what is happening, to remove my soul from my body. And it's just connected with a tiny little thread. Now your soul is out of your body, but it's still connected. If you have to die, cut, done. That's all Malak al-Maut has to do. What? Done. So you know that it's a kind of dying. So you say, Ya Rabbi, in amsakta nafsi farhamha wa in arsaltaha, yani, fahfadha. Yani, oh my Lord, if you take my soul and decide to keep it with you, in that world, then please have mercy upon it. But if you give it back, then please preserve it. That is what you do when you go to bed. That is the meaning of that dua. So we shouldn't go to bed knowing that we're about to enter a kind of grave, exposing ourselves to death, and knowing that we can maybe only wake up on the day of judgment. We don't want to take that risk. So this is why Barakallahu Fikum Allah says, Ittaqullah. Yani, and he said, Well, tandur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadwa taqullah. That every soul looks at what he has prepared for tomorrow and fear Allah because Allah is well informed about what we do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial for myself and for you. La ilaha illa anta rabbi subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimi. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So it's all about preparing yourself for a moment where you will depart from this world and that you have positive thoughts of the place you are heading for. And that's where, why the Prophet said, like that nobody among you die. 
لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بالله. Let nobody among you die. That's that's the advice of your Prophet, عليه الصلاة والسلام. Don't die unless you have positive thoughts of Allah. But what does that mean? Does that mean like, oh, I have so many sins, He will forgive them? No. It means I've done so many wrongs and I have rectified them. Ya Rabbi, I want to, now is the time to come back to you. When you think of Qiyamah, that you think like, I think that I have repented for every sin and rectified every wrong. People have died like that. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was on his deathbed, in the arms of his wife, the Prophet ﷺ was in the arms of Aisha radiallahu anha, like in Bukhari wa Muslim. And then he used the siwak, preparing himself for the beautiful encounter with Allah. So he was combining things, social life, in the arms of his wife. Beauty, hygiene, using the siwak. <coughs> he was advising his people, social life and responsibility, and spiritually, he pointed with his finger to the sky and said, Allahumma fi rafiq al a'la. Oh Allah, please take me to the highest, highest degrees and states in paradise. So he was able at the moment where he died, his death was a reflection of him respecting every dimension in his life. His brothers, his wife, his Lord, his body, and he was ready. He was ready, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and all the people that were sitting on their deathbed, like I've mentioned before, that person when the the children were crying, they said, "Ya abata, ya wailata, oh father, 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 are you leaving us?" And then he sat on his deathbed, raising his hands to the sky, first telling his children, "Oh my children, I have been preparing myself for this moment all my life." Ya Rabbi, khudni ilayka li anni ilayka la mushtaq. And then he said, Ya Rabbi, take my soul because I long for being with you. That's how you want to die. That's how you want to die. That you look forward to meeting Allah. It is the same when you go back because you go back to schools and you're waiting for the results and you know you didn't do well, you don't want to go to school. And when you have the results, you don't want to return home. But if you have good, now, if, if you have good results, you go to school, you're happy because you know in advance, I've done well. Well, this is the same thing. When you prepare yourself with taqwa, then you go back to Allah with a smile on your face. And that's what brings us to a good death. I'm going to share one with you. The Prophet said, some people, they perform good deeds. And then he said, and right before they die, and there's an arm length between themselves and Jannah. يَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْكِتَابِ أو عَلَيْهِمْ الْكِتَابِ Then the decree comes down. فَيَحْمَلْ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ And then he performs a deed of the people of hellfire and he enters hellfire. But when we look at another hadith, it says, فِيمَا يَبْدُ لِلنَّاسِ Yani when he was doing good actions, in the eyes of people at least, because inwardly he was not even connected to Allah. Meaning that Allah will not allow you to play a role in front of the people and that you are Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. Prayer Guy, Mr. Song Guy, Mr. Quran Guy, Mr. Generous Guy, and then you die, but in reality it was nothing but a show off. Allah will not allow people who were not true to die a beautiful death. They will be exposed. Allah doesn't accept this. Because when you die, you are being squeezed like that orange and the last drop will come out and that is the true you. Like there you go, all the pains. Do you think you can fake it when you're dying? Do you think you can fake it La ilaha illallah, when it was not in your heart? Allah will seal that mouth. They will not allow you to do it. So better prepare yourself when nobody sees you. When nobody sees you, you're at your best. And when you're with people, you are good. And then when you die, that's there where you die with hope, sweetness. It's like a dream, like going back to Allah, your maker. And then people say, wow, he had a good death. And you don't do it for the people. That's the result of it. So all the faking doesn't work. You can show the people all the forms of religiosity. If it's not sincere, Allah will remove that mask on the day of judgment or rather even in this life and show your true face or my true face. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us taqwa, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ta'ala min al-mutaqeen. Alana al-wasiran, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaaha. Wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaaha. Anta waliyuha wa maulaha. Allahumma ahdina fi min hadayt. Wa aafina fi min aafayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barik lana fi ma aatayt. Wa qina wa sarif anna sharra ma qadayt. Fa innaka Rabbi taqdeer wa la yukla alayk. Fa innahu lan ya'isa man aadayt. Wa lan yadhilla man waadayt. تباركت ربي وتعاليت اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا وهمنا وغمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل بقائنا في هذه الدنيا صوما ولقاء معك يا ربي عيدا اللهم اجعل خير يومنا يوم نلقاك اللهم أرنا ذنوبنا حتى نتوب منها يا رب العالمين لا إله إلا أنت اللهم لا تؤخذني بما فعل السفهاء منا اللهم كن مع المستضعفين في كل مكان لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كأني كنت من الظالمين وأقيم الصلاة